Patrick Ferguson was a Scottish officer in the British Army, an early advocate of light infantry and the designer of the Ferguson rifle. He is best known for his service in the 1780 military campaign of the Carolinas during the American Revolutionary War, in which he played a great effort in recruiting American loyalists to serve in his militias against the Patriots. Patrick uh, basically started his military career in his late teens and he participated in fighting the Seven Years War in the Holy Roman Empire. He suffered a leg ailment and he had to return home, but when he returned home he wanted to stay in the military and so he took part in light infantry training, which got the attention of a famous general known as General Howe. During this time, Ferguson was developing a new rifle design based on an old classic breech-loading musket design and therefore developed the Ferguson rifle. The Ferguson rifle was different from muzzleloader rifles because the breech of the weapon is closed by 11 starting threads on a tapered screw and the trigger guard serves as a crank to rotate it. You would load the ball into the breech, close the crank, it would uh, cut off the gunpowder and the rest of the gunpowder would be left into pour put into the firing pan. It was very quick and it was very efficient as a rifle and in a highly trained soldier's hands it could fire six to ten shots. This was in comparison to a muzzle loading brown bess or what would be called a long land pattern musket or even the Kentucky rifle at that time which if in the hands of a trained soldier could maybe fire maybe up to three shots a minute. Patrick Ferguson also demonstrated that not only could his uh, rifle could shoot six to ten shots, but it could shoot it accurately out to 200 yards. 200 yards. This was very, very uh, effective in the fact that you have to understand that muskets at that time, being smooth bore, couldn't really hit out accurately other than past maybe 50 yards, but this could hit some a target at over 200 yards. And the design of the rifle was pretty genius. The massive problem with it was that being that it was the 1770s and this was the beginning of the British Industrial Revolution, the machinery, the equipment that would later on allow for mass production wasn't available yet. So what you had were local gunsmiths and subcontractors could, that could somehow manufacture these guns. And this was very much time consuming because the Ferguson rifle was a very much a complex weapon. The four gun specs. Oh, excuse me, the four gunsmiths making Ferguson's ordnance rifle could not make 100 in six months at four times the cost per arm of a standard musket. It was just easier to manufacture brown bess, and this was the one of the huge disadvantages with the rifle. And because there only could because only a few of these could be manufactured, a small unit known as the Experimental Rifle Corps were armed with this new rifle and they were the ones that were using this in the battlefields because at the time, like I stated, this couldn't be mass produced and whole units or whole regi or massive regiments or battalions could not be equipped with this rifle. And Patrick Ferguson actually led one of these rifle corps in 1777 in the Battle of Brandywine on September 11th, 1777. Now, there is some account, and this has been disputed, that Patrick Ferguson, while on the battlefield, spotted George Washington, which at the time he didn't even know it was George Washington on a horse, and had him in his sights. But he didn't shoot at him because Washington had his back to him and didn't realize that Ferguson was there aiming his rifle at him. And Patrick Ferguson, being a gentleman and an officer, decided not to shoot him because he felt that it would be against his honor code. So he was wounded during that battle and later on while he was recuperating in a hospital, a surgeon actually informed him that the person he was aiming at might have been possibly George Washington. Ferguson later wrote that even if it was George Washington or any high ranking general, he would have never taken the shot because he wouldn't want him to be dishonorable in any way. He was a, again, he was a British officer. Later on, after the disbanded, uh, after the Experimental Rifle Corps was disbanded due to the fact that there was nowhere they could go with this rifle, they couldn't manufacture any more very quickly, and 
the British military really didn't see the potential of it, they disbanded. Patrick Ferguson went on to fight in just standard units, and in 1778 he would fight up against privateers who were seizing British ships in the Battle of Chestnut uh, Neck. After that, um, a few we about a week later, Ferguson would be engaging American forces in a surprise attack on an encampment of patriots in the early morning in which he overwhelmed American forces and basically massacred a whole unit of more than 50 soldiers in what was known as the Little Egg Harbor Massacre. He later wrote that he was kind of in, he was kind of dismayed by the fact that the Americans were not putting out posts or watch guards to anticipate or see any kind of British fighters coming up or surprising them and he was kind of amazed by this and that's why it's considered a massacre rather than a battlefield battle. In 1780, Lord, General Lord Cornwallis led the invasion of South Carolina and North Carolina. And Patrick Ferguson was a part of this invasion. And his task was to recruit local loyalists into his forces to fight up against Patriot militias. In a way, this was actually sort of an, a civil war situation because you had local loyalists up against Patriot militias. Militias up against other militias. And he was tasked with actually... Not just lead, not just recruiting, but leading these uh, leading these militia units up against other patriot uh, militias in battle. In one notable battle, he was caught off guard by uh, the patriot forces led by Isaac Shelby at the Battle of Musgrove Mill in, on the 19th of August, 1780. Uh, he was overwhelmed. His encampment and the British forces took on hu a huge amount of casualties. And they were almost almost wiped out by the American forces, the by the Patriot forces, and the Patriot forces soon fell back into the Carolina wilderness. And the Patrick Ferguson tried to pursue them as 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 hard and as quickly as possible as he can. He wanted to continue the fight, and he wanted to kind of destroy these uh, this Patriot forces. So he went after them, and. Around that time, he would station in North Carolina around this place called Gilbert Town, and he issued a challenge to the Patriot leaders. He said, listen, if you don't lay down your arms, we will, and I'm quoting him here, lay waste to your country with fire and sword. He basically wanted to wipe them out because he saw these mountain men and a lot of these militias as a very much a, a threat, and he said, listen, if you guys want to continue this, I will bring heavy firepower and heavy force upon you guys and of course the local militias did not take this uh did not take this uh you know laying down they they were not going to lay down their forces they were actually angered and this allowed them to kind of form and organize their forces into an army and push up against ferguson and this culminated on september on october the 7th 1780 in which the two armies the Patriot forces and the Loyalist forces clashed at the Battle of Kings Mountain the battle went badly for the Loyalist position high on the mountain ridge and during the fighting Ferguson was shot from his horse with his foot still in his stirrup he was dragged onto the Patriot side according to Patriot accounts when a Patriot ap approached the major for his surrender Ferguson drew his pistol and shot him shot him as a last act of defiance other soldiers retaliated and Ferguson's body was found with eight musket holes in it Patriot accounts said their militia stripped his body of clothing and urinated on him before burial they buried it buried him in an oxide near the site of his fall so he died a very much a brutal brutal death he was really his body was desecrated and he was he was buried at the Battle of Kings Mountain and his loyalist forces were pretty much wiped out so he should be remembered for the fact that he designed an incredible breech loading rifle and he not only did he design an incredible rifle but his experimental rifle corps is something that is unique to me because it reminds me a lot of Burdan's sharpshooters during the American Civil War if anybody knows, uh, Burdan's sharpshooters were a, un a union uh, unit that was usually in task with skirmishes of attacking Confederates, doing recon and stuff, and they played a major role at the battles of at the Battle of Gettysburg. They were using a breech-loading rifle, which was highly accurate, known as the Sharps rifle. It sort of reminds me of the 
Ferguson rifle, you know, talking about it, and the fact that they were a special unit. This unit of Burdan's sharpshooters inflicted heavy casualties on the Confederates and were very effective during that war. And I feel like Patrick Ferguson sort of contributed to the breech loading rifle and, and sort of allowed that to happen. And I think his design, I wouldn't say would, would lead on to other designs, but I think his design was genius for its time. And the sad thing was it was never fully appreciated by the British military, but later on we saw the adoption of breech-loading rifles. And so we now are using breech-loading weapons today and muzzle loaders are completely obsolete. Thank you for watching this video. Sorry if I misspoke or mispronounced words or have a hard time reading. It's very difficult for me to do these types of recordings. So I hope you enjoyed this video nonetheless. If you learned anything from it, I'm glad, because I'm going to continue doing these sort of informative and educational videos in the future. Thank you for watching, and I hope everybody has a wonderful day.